This presentation discusses the features a dentist may wish to consider when purchasing a new light hearing unit and identifies some additional features that may ideally be desirable for future incorporation into dental light sources. Carol Davidson has identified the aims of light hearing as follows. There is of necessity a practical conflict between these aims and a balance has to be struck. LED curing lights are replacing halogen units which are now considered to be obsolete although many dentists still use them. Plasma arc lights are very energy inefficient and have limited market share. Modulated cure modes such as soft start and pulse delay can reduce shrinkage stress, but clinical studies have failed to show any real benefits. Autoclavable light guides are considered to be the gold standard from an infection control viewpoint, but require care to avoid damage or contamination and should ideally be replaced on a regular basis. Fixed lens type light sources require barrier protection which can reduce light transmission. Units which offer only a single fixed radiation time do not account for differing materials energy requirements. LED units allow encoded backup to battery power supply negate the need for extra batteries or backup lights. The vast majority of manufacturers supply blue LED sources which will cure almost every material on the market today. Violet emitting chips in polywave units activate alternative initiators, but to a lesser depth, and these units do not offer the spectral spatial homogeneity of their halogen predecessors. Dentists who undertake extended orthodontic and restorative treatments, such as multiple bracket and veneer placements, look for long uninterrupted run times and many current LED units fail to meet this requirement. Inbuilt radiometers allow the dentist to monitor the functionality of the unit over time. Different tip diameters allow one to cater for different clinical activities such as tack or spot curing and single hit irradiation of large restorations. The radiance levels vary greatly between lights. Unfortunately, there's a trend for manufacturers to market increasingly powerful units, perhaps based on the erroneous perception that there is a universal reciprocal relationship between irradiance and radiation time. They look for the need for speed. The right-hand figure represents the data for two halogen units used for 40 seconds to cure the material the clues in. As intensity, or more correctly a radiance, increases beyond a certain point, it may be seen that the rate of gain in terms of increasing cure depth falls off beyond a certain point. The evidence base for increasing irradiance levels above two or three thousand milliwatts per square centimeter has yet to be established. There are risks with using powerful light sources for extended periods. My former colleague at Birmingham Ted Harrington developed a method of monitoring the light transmission through a polymerizing sample as a way of predicting appropriate radiation times for any light source and material combination using a simple PC interfaced photodiode assembly. This idea has been furthered by the recent work of Professor Fred Rigerberg, who has correlated light transmission changes during cure with real-time conversion. Hopefully such a method, if commercially realized, will make the decision over appropriate radiation times easier for dentists to make. This and other innovative features which have already been marketed, such as laser aiming function and the autofocus concept, should lead to simpler and more predictable curing of restorations. Clinical simulation studies such as these have shown that operator skill is critical to effective light curing intraorally. Stable and accurate light source positioning are required for the whole radiation period. Preparation location, light unit design and output all influence radiant exposure received. Ultraviolet light sources were employed before blue light curing was developed. The extra bulk and weight 
of one of the original Nova lights may be seen here in comparison to a small lightweight cordless LED unit. Whilst ultraviolet light sources rapidly became obsolete when blue light curing materials were introduced, it is interesting to note that the original UV cured composites were capable of long-term clinical success. Irrespective of material chemistry, good clinical technique and appropriate radiation sources are required to deliver optimal care when placing light-activated restorations for our patients.